Okay, so very nice to have you here. And today I would like to talk to you about a very important topic that I've talked about before, but it's so important it's well worth revisiting. Um, it is something that I think most people overlook. Um, so it can hold people back from getting the results that they want in their life, whether that is materially or spiritually. Um, so it's a really, really core, important topic. And, uh, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. But before I do that, I wanted to share with you a few things just to uh, set some intentions and expectations. So uh, the first thing is really about the intention here. So the intention, my intention for uh, offering this meeting is to support your greatest good, to support the greatest good of all beings. Um, and so that's really what this is about. It's just about helping you to realize that you have the power within you to be able to choose your truth, to choose what is um, true and real for you, and to be able to be empowered to live in alignment with that, to make choices consistently in alignment with that. You don't have to depend on any kind of external circumstances for that. You don't have to wait for any conditions before you can choose that. You can start choosing that now, today, and then you can choose that consistently for the rest of your life um, and enjoy the benefits of that. And so that's what this is really about. Um, and, and this is for all levels. So wherever you're at in this moment or in any moment that what I'm sharing with you is intended to support you in your greatest good. So, um, you know, if you're in a place in your life where your main focus is material stuff, then what I'm sharing with you can support you in that. And that's good and fine and great. You know, you have to start where you are. You have to be where you are now. You can't be functioning somewhere else. It doesn't work very well, at least. And uh, if wh where you're really at is that you're wanting uh, spiritual growth, if your main focus is on, on uh, spiritual, your spiritual life, then what I'm sharing with you is also applicable there. Okay, so this is uh, really about meeting you wherever you are and, uh, and any combination of those things. So that's the intention. I also wanted to share because I, I, I got an interesting comment that I do. I, I don't think I read all the comments on YouTube, but I do read some of them. I try to read as many of them as I can um, because my aim is to be providing support for where people are at. And so I, I do, I do you know, read the, the comments with that in mind. And uh, I got a comment last week from somebody who was, I, I believe, complaining um, that they uh, did not like that. Uh, they, they felt like I delivered the content too slowly, that it was too boring. And of course, you know, you're free to, to go somewhere else if you don't like this, um, because that's fine. But also, I wanted, I, I, I thought it would be helpful if I could make clear something um, that could help to resolve some of those kinds of concerns that people might have. Because I think sometimes what happens is that we can be so wound up, so anxious looking for some kind of solution to our problems, uh, that we can have a difficult time kind of just relaxing and receiving. And so there can be this impatience that arises because there's a notion that if I could just get the information fast enough, then everything would be okay. And, uh, you know, you could watch this on YouTube at 2x speed. You could probably find a way to watch it even faster. Right, I'm sure there's some kind of app that will do that for you. And you could 
use some kind of AI assistant to you know, get all of the information from the whole internet and deliver it to you in this very condensed format. Um, and I'm reminded now of, uh, there, there was a book, there is a book actually, uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, there was way ahead of its time, apparently, because uh, there was there was this uh, being, basically like an AI assistant that was tasked with coming up with the meaning of everything. And uh, the meaning is 42, you know, and it's sort of like that. So I can give you, I, I can provide all that to you up front if you would like, you know, so here, here are, here is the condensed version. So you can save yourself the time. You don't have to pay attention throughout. Uh, be happy. Yeah. You know. Uh, but here's the thing is it's not just about the information. It really isn't about the information. I mean, the information can be useful, but it's really about receiving. It's actually about the receiving of yourself. It's about meeting yourself. And so part of the opportunity here is actually the willingness to do that. So maybe sometimes you might find the you know, cadence, the speed, the rhythm, something about it, you know, the appearance, something might be offensive to some part of you. And as I said, that, that's fine. If you don't want to hang out here, that's totally fine. It's not going to hurt my feelings. But if there's something in you that has you here and you can tell the truth about that and you realize on some level that there's something of value here, then the invitation is that you could actually receive that. And you could, you could actually do that right now. You don't have to wait for the information to come at the end. You could start receiving now. And again, by receiving, I mean receiving yourself. That's the real gift of what's available here. If you take advantage of that, then you will be in a very good position. Because when you start to learn that, then you can take that with you everywhere you go. You could take that with you. I know nobody does this anymore, but if you were to happen to go to a store and be in line at the store, you could, you could take that with you there, right? Like while, if you're at, if you're driving somewhere, if you're in traffic, if you're interacting with your spouse or your children or your parents, if you're experiencing physical pain, if you're, uh, if you've received some news that you're experiencing as distressing or you're processing that. This fundamental knowledge, this experience, this uh, ability to be with yourself, to receive yourself, to meet yourself, is the gift that keeps on giving. It really is. It will serve you so well. So that's the real invitation is to receive that now. And if you're not sure how to do that, uh, then that can be what the information uh, can perhaps support you in understanding. So I wanted to just share that because I think that can also be helpful. Um, so the topic that I would like to explore today, which again, as I've said, is a topic that I have explored with you in the past. So this will not be new, but it's so important that uh, it's really, really worth revisiting is the topic of forgiveness. Um, I had an experience over the weekend that uh, made this clearer to me that um, just how important uh, forgiveness is. And 
And it's one of those things like the, these core lessons, forgiveness is one of them. Um, you probably could spend the rest of your life studying this and continue to receive richness from it. So it's not exactly like learning basic arithmetic where you say, okay, I've got it, you know, done with that. There's such a wealth when it comes to forgiveness that you, you'll go through stages most likely with it. You'll probably discover maybe perhaps today, you'll discover some new layer of forgiveness. And you might think, wow, that I, now I've really got it. Now I understand it. And, and that's great, you know, it will serve you. Um, but then you will probably at some point encounter some other experience that will offer you the opportunity to learn yet another layer of forgiveness. And it's always so wonderful. Um, you know, it just keeps on getting richer and richer. And so just keep being open to it and uh, it will really enrich your life. So uh, as I said, I had this experience over the weekend that uh, where I was feeling, you know, I felt a little, felt a little bit like off, a little slightly agitated. And I was thinking, what, you know, what is this about? What is this? What's going on? And I realized that um, it was such a, it's just such a wonderful thing. It was such a wonderful thing because um, what, when I, when I really looked, what I saw was that I had, um, I had, I had subtly not been acting quite in alignment with my values and that I was actually sort of on, uh, on, on a certain level, I was kind of upset with myself about that thinking, oh, you know, how could you what's wrong with you. And, um, and so I realized, oh, wow, you know, here's this, yet again, forgiveness comes to, to the rescue. Um, so forgiveness is, uh, as I said, from the beginning, I think it's very much not understood by people. Um, and, so, and, and if you don't have the right understanding, of forgiveness, then it's difficult to benefit from, from it. Because if you have the wrong understanding of forgiveness, then you're not so likely to uh, actually learn from it and put it into practice and therefore receive the benefits. You know, a lot, I think sometimes what happens is people think that they shouldn't forgive. They think that forgiveness will, will somehow, uh, be problematic for them or they think that forgiveness is uh, a, a weakness or they think that forgiveness means that uh means like a disempowerment or uh forgiveness is like condoning bad behavior or forgiveness means um letting bad things just keep happening so, uh, and I'm sure there are lots of other misunderstandings, but if you think about it, if those are the kinds of understandings that you have about forgiveness, then you're not likely to actually put it into practice and, and benefit from it. But the benefits are enormous because the alternative, if you consider it, is that uh, you would not forgive. And if you don't forgive, then just think about what, that experiences. So think about something that maybe you have not forgiven. Maybe something where you have not forgiven somebody else for, or you haven't forgiven life for, or you haven't forgiven yourself for. And notice what that experience is. And for some of you, the thing might be relatively recent, right? You might say, well, I'm, you know, this thing that happened earlier today, I'm not forgiving myself for it because I really screwed up. 
or, you know, I'm not forgiving my husband for this thing that he did yesterday because he doesn't, he doesn't deserve forgiveness because he really screwed up or, um, you know, could be like that, or it could be something that's really kind of ancient. Like you might find that you're still holding on to things from how long ago. You know, I, I once had this realization, which was that, um, like, and this is crazy. It's absolutely insane, but it didn't occur to me that it was insane for a long time. So uh, I had a story at one time that uh, that there uh, there was something wrong with my birth that and that it was all caused by uh, unconscious, uncaring people who didn't do things properly. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, you know, I was kind of upset about that. Now I say it's insane because I have no conscious memory of my birth experience, but I had just come up with a story, which was that there were some people who did some, did the wrong things and that was bad and unforgivable. Um, and, and then, you know, so, so not only was I upset about something that I didn't even remember, but I was, I was upset and not forgiving people about something that happened at the beginning of this lifetime. And I was carrying that around. So think about the things that you might be carrying around, whether you've been carrying them around for five minutes or five days or five years or five decades or however long it's been. And just notice what that experience is. And notice, uh, you know, if you just keep adding on more things that you don't forgive. It's a bit like, uh, and I've used this metaphor before, but it's a bit as though you maybe have a sack. And you put rocks in the sack. And then you sling it over your back and you just sort of carry that around. And at first, it's just one tiny little pebble. And it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, you know. But after a while, you've been carrying this sack with not just one pebble, but now it's like, you know, 20 pebbles. But you've been carrying it for every day for a while and you start to notice a little bit it's like well this is not feeling so great but you try to put it out of your mind because you just tell yourself well this is just how life is but then of course then the big thing comes along it's like the big rock you put the big rock in, and it's like oh now you're really lugging the thing around and um and after a while it's like how many of those big rocks do you have in there you got all the little pebbles, you know, it's like a thousand little pebbles and a thousand medium sized rocks. And then you've got like a, quite a few sizable hunks of stone in there. You can't even really lift it up anymore. You're just dragging it. Do you notice that a little bit? So, when you do that, um, can you notice how, I mean, number one, it's kind of unpleasant. Number two, it limits your options. Think about it. You know, people say, hey, come, we're going to a party. And you're like, can I bring my sack? And they're like, no, can't bring your sack. Well, I can't go then. Because I, I go everywhere with my sack of rocks. <laughs> But you can't even fit through most doorways with this, you know, the sack of rocks is so wide. You can't fit through most, most doorways, so you can't go to most parties. And you tell yourself, and, and it's probably true, most parties are not worth going to. But then, on the other hand, there are those parties which maybe are worth going to. But you can't go to them because you got your sack of rocks that you're prioritizing. But you don't recognize or acknowledge that you're prioritizing it. You just tell yourself that that's how life is. So um, lack of forgiveness is like that. And it kind of creeps up on you. 
and most people are doing it so you don't really notice I'll, I'm reminded of another thing. This is now, this might be, this is even, you know, more revealing. You're going to learn all kinds of interesting stuff about me now. Um, once upon a time, uh, I attended an event called a uh, rainbow gathering. Some of you may know about these things and uh, I, I can't actually recommend it. I, I went once, once was enough for me, but, um, but it's a thing where the, the people congregate uh, and they come together from, and they're, they're in the U S they have these national gatherings. And, uh, so people will come together for, from all over the country and, uh, and they've got, and I, I don't remember the terminology exactly, but there's, the, the, there's a policy in the, in the proper gathering itself of, I think they have a no alcohol policy. Um, and then, but out, but on the periphery of the gathering, they've got, there's no, no such policy. And so there are people who want, they, they want to go to the rainbow gathering, but they don't, they basically, they got like their sack of rocks, so they can't go in to the door um, because they, they're clinging to alcohol. They're not willing to let go of alcohol. So they're, they're like on the periphery and they can't remember what they call it. They call it a, a camp or B camp or something like that. And it's the people who basically hang out in the parking lot and drink alcohol. Um, so, you know, it's, it's like, there's plenty of people who are willing to do that kind of thing. So you can find a lot of people who will hang out on the periphery of the party with their sack of rocks and they'll all tell one another, you know, well, you know, it's, it's all sour grapes anyway. You know, nobody wants to go in there because they can't, you can't even fit in through the door. So the world is a lot like that. There's a lot of people who will tell you, don't forgive. And forgiveness is BS anyway. And, you know, it doesn't, won't help you. And it's not important. And there's not, you know, when, there's nothing wrong with you and your sack of rocks. Keep on dragging it around. Uh, you look good with your sack of rocks. And so... You can get a lot of support for that kind of thing. Uh, but you could also just notice for yourself what's actually true for you. Is it working well for you to keep on holding on to those grievances and those resentments and all the stories about how people have done things and you've done things and life has done things that are so terrible. And maybe they're not even all that terrible, but they're just a little bit terrible. Just terrible enough that you want to hold on to it because it's like you get some kind of some kind of sick thrill out of it. You know, like you can drag it out at the at the B camp or whatever it is and you show it to people and like look at my story and they say, oh wow, that's quite a story. But you, is it really worth it anymore? And my proposal is that it's not. It's really not. So uh, what, my, what I'm suggesting is that forgiveness is a powerful medicine that will um, transform your life when you start to work with it in very positive ways. It will open up doors for you that you didn't previously know existed, uh, opportunities that you didn't know were available for you. You will start to realize uh, that life can be something much richer, much more fulfilling than you would previously recognize. So, um, Forgiveness, in my view, is really just about learning and letting go. And so the, the learning part, I think, is really important because if you don't learn, then um, you're probably just going to repeat the same pattern. Right. So there was, so you had some experience in your life 
I mean, you had many experiences, but you had e each grievance, each resentment, each thing, it corresponds to an experience that you've had that didn't match up with your expectations or your hopes, right? So you were hoping or expecting that things would work out in a certain way. And then your experience proves other, otherwise, right? So you might have uh, expected that uh, uh, other people would always tell you the truth. And then you had an experience where somebody did not, apparently, did not tell you the truth. And you uh, then might have, have hold on to some resentment. So uh, now you could just let go, which would be probably better than holding on. But um, then maybe you wouldn't, you would just keep finding yourself in the same kind of situation over and over and over again. But I think that a more effective strategy is to learn and let go. So uh, what can you learn that could actually support you in what you value? Well, of course, to know that, you'd have to know what you value. So that's, that's a useful exercise to go through to find out what you really value in life. Um, but if you then ask yourself, what could I learn from this situation that could support me in living in alignment with my values, with knowing, with experiencing my values in a richer way? Then you can take that learning and you can let go of the rest. It's sort of like when you receive, this is not a perfect metaphor, but you'll forgive me. It's like if you receive something in a package in the mail, you could keep all the packaging around, but alternatively, you could unpackage the thing and you could take the thing that you, you know, you like ordered some little gemstone or something and you have the, okay, take the bit and it comes in big package. Of course they always do. Right. So you get this big package and a little gemstone and you could unpackage it and you take the little gemstone and then you could mindfully do something with all the packaging. I'm sure. Right. You would reuse, repurpose, recycle, etc. But, um, you, or alternatively, you could keep all the packaging. You might ask yourself, why would you do that? Well, I don't know, but think about it. Maybe sometimes this is what we do metaphorically in our lives though, right? Like there's some essential learning that's there in the experience. Something that's there for you that can enrich your life. Something that can help you. In every experience, think how amazing that is. Think how amazing and, and how magnificent life is that there's, it's this, it's this infinite tapestry where every, every single thread is purposeful and perfect. And it's woven in such a way that it gives you exactly what you need. So, Every experience is like that. Every experience has that essence in it that you can receive that can make your life richer. And in order to do that, of course, you would want to digest it. You would want to process it, unpackage it, and receive the essence uh, and so I think of, of forgiveness like that. So on, on the surface, it seems like this thing, like, you know, oh, how awful. But if you process it and unpackage it, you'll find right at the heart of it is this essence that is 
miraculously exactly what you needed. And if you take that and and receive that, how wonderful your life can be. And then, of course, like I said, why would you want to keep all the packaging? Because if you try to keep all the packaging, uh, might run out of space, you know, again, then it's, you're back to dragging the sack around. You're like, people are like, what are you doing? You're like, all the packaging, I got to take it with me. So all, you know, all of these experiences, all of the people, all the personalities, all of the drama, all of the, all of it is there to deliver to you exactly what it is that you want. Now, not always in the, in the way that you thought you wanted it, but the essence is sometimes, sometimes, you know, some of us are uh, thick skulled. So, you know, like maybe, maybe life's like, you know, here, gives you like the, you know, just something very delicate and you're like, you know, you just, you don't, you discard it, you dismiss it. And so in order to get your attention, it, life will turn it up, intensify things until finally, you know, it's like smacking you around and you're like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll pay attention. But when you receive the essence of that, you'll see it's so absolutely perfect. Not that you want to sign up to keep receiving more of it in the same kind of packaging, right? And this is the mistake that I, I alluded to earlier that people make, mistake that people make is they think, if I forgive, then I'm just saying I want more of the same packaging. You know, like that person hit me. And if I forgive, then I'm going to be getting more people hitting me. Actually, it doesn't work that way. It, what will happen is if you fail to forgive, if you fail to actually receive the essence, the learning, and then let go, you're more likely, it's more of a setup for more problems in your life. Because, uh, because you said you want, and you don't remember this, of course, but you said at some point, you said, this is what I want to learn. This is the gift that I want to receive. Not necessarily in this packaging, but, you know, the packaging is whatever it is. You, the packaging is going to be what, however it needs to be packaged in order to deliver it to you in this moment so that you, you will receive it, whatever that is. But it's the essence that you said you determined was so important that you said, no matter what, I need this to be delivered to me. And if you refuse to accept that, if you refuse to learn that and receive that, then because you basically you said, no matter what, I need this to be delivered to me. If you're like, okay, life says, okay, fine. You didn't receive it this way. How about this way? Oh, you don't like it that way? How about this way? You're still not willing to receive it. How about this way? Uh, so you could choose to receive the essence of it now to learn that, to integrate that. And then to let go of the rest because the rest of it was really there just to provide you with the learning, with the essence of what you really want. So, uh, and that applies regardless of the apparent messenger. So sometimes that... in the, that's you. Sometimes you are the packaging. Your own personality, your own behavior is the packaging. So sometimes you do things. And this is one of the, this is another one of those mistakes that I see that people make is they'll say, well, you know, they'll, they'll start to warm up to the possibility of forgiveness and they'll say, I can forgive other people. You know, I'll forgive, fine, I'll forgive most people. I just won't forgive them. 
And then after a while, they realize, okay, that's really painful. Fine, I'll forgive them too. And they're like, oh, this is so much better. But then, but I won't forgive myself. I'm a special case. I'll forgive everybody else, but not me. Because somehow we, we think, well, everybody else, I, I can accept they might make mistakes or they might, you know, they might have shortcomings or they might whatever. But me, I should be perfect. I should have always been perfect. I should never, ever, ever make any mistake in any way. Well, good luck with that one. So however it shows up, even if it shows up through your personality and, and your behavior, still important to forgive. Because if you don't, again, you're just throwing another rock in the sack to drag around. And how well is that working out for you? And if you tell the truth, it doesn't work out well at all. I mean, at first you can justify it. You say, well, you know, it's a good workout. I'm getting strong. <laughs> but after a while, you're like, you're just worn down. You're not getting strong. You're just exhausted. And then, and then just notice what happens as a result of that. You know, you tell yourself, well, I'm, I can't forgive myself. You know, like if I forgive myself, then I'm letting myself off the hook and uh, I'm just, I'm just accepting bad behavior and I'm going to, and, uh, and I won't learn. I have to just keep holding on to this and keep flogging myself so that I don't ever do that again. But guess what? Don't you just sort of become like um, over time kind of jaded and, and uh, irritable? Like, are you actually, is it actually supporting you and being the person that you want to be? Probably not. So forgiveness is across the board very, very powerful, and I highly recommend it. Um, and so how can forgiveness help you? I mean, apart from, you know, lightening the load and allowing you maybe to open up to some experiences that... Previously, you were preventing yourself from being able to experience um, and uh, and learning the things that you really want to learn apart from those things. What other benefits might forgiveness have? Because I know those things in and of themselves probably are not enough to convince most people to really consider forgiveness. Um, but, you know, what if it could get you the Ferrari? Would you consider it then? And uh, some another comment, somebody said, please stop just using the money uh, examples. They wanted me, they specifically wanted me to use an example having to do with cancer. I don't remember what it was, but, you know, whatever it is that you want in your life, whatever you struggle with, so what, whether it's material things that you want that you're, that you're struggling with, or if it's, relationship challenges that you're having and just to make it clear i think the person who was asking um that i not use the million dollar example anymore and they wanted and it was something about like aging parents with cancer or something like that uh, i think what they were what they were asking really was about improving relationships which i do often refer to but i think sometimes people think that like relationship is somehow a code word for just Getting, getting a significant other or something like that, which is not what I'm intending. I'm, t I'm talking about relationships. I mean, you might notice that you have relationships with all kinds of beings, right? Like you probably, if you have children, you relate to your children. If you have a spouse, you relate to your spouse. If you have, well, if you have parents, you relate to your parents. If you had parents, you might still be relating to your parents. <laughs> um, if you have, you know, employer you probably relate to your employer. If you have employees, you relate to them. You relate to 
you know, government employees, when you interact with them, you relate to uh, people, shop, shop, people who work in, in stores, you relate to, you know, all kinds of people, right? You relate to neighbors, you relate to every, anybody who you relate to, you're relating to. So those are all broadly speaking could be called relationships. Uh, and so you just might notice that if you want improvements when it comes to finances, career, creative expression, relationships, health, if you're just thinking you want spiritual enlightenment, if that's your thing, in any, with any, with regard to any of these things, forgiveness is a powerful tool that can help you. In fact, I will go so far as to say without forgiveness, you cannot sustainably, reliably uh, have uh, accomplish any of those things in a way that will be fulfilling for you. So whatever it is that you're wanting, and I know some people still are stuck saying, uh, I don't know what I want or I don't want anything. But you do want something. Like, don't, you know, don't you want to just think about the relationship or relationships that you struggle with? Where you, you would like to be able to get along with that person, but instead you find that you're getting into conflict. And maybe you don't want a million dollars, but maybe you, maybe you would like to not be uh, experiencing anxiety about paying your bills. You know, so you want, you want things and whatever, whatever it is you want, forgiveness is a powerful ally in that process. And as I said earlier, I, I don't think that you can sustainably, reliably and uh, satisfactorily experience or achieve those things without forgiveness. You might be able to use your power uh, in certain ways to achieve certain things in the short term, but it, without forgiveness, you could you could steamroll your way into certain things. But I don't believe that you can sustain those things, and I don't. I definitely don't think that you can experience real fulfillment unless and until you are willing to work with forgiveness sincerely. Forgiveness is uh, the, the magical thing that will turn on the lights in your life. It will allow you to uh, achieve things more successfully and feel more fulfilled. Um, so, couple more points on this to uh, hopefully be helpful. So how does that work? By what mechanism? Because that seems like maybe for some people that might seem crazy that like, how could forgiveness help me to get a Ferrari? I mean, come on, that's insane. Well, so if you think about this for a moment, you, you might realize that everything is energy. And not even at sort of like this woo-woo level, everything's energy, but what, which it, it is, but, but even in a very kind of uh, materialistic, mechanical sense, you could just start to realize that you invest your energy in terms of your time, your enthusiasm, your behavior, your actions, um, in order to achieve things in your life. Right. So if you want a Ferrari and I know nobody here wants it. Well, somebody might want a Ferrari. But, you know, if, if you wanted a Ferrari and you could substitute whatever other thing you want, it could be the improved relationships, it could be a better career, it could be whatever the thing you want. But if you if you want that thing and I'm using the example of the Ferrari, if you want a Ferrari. You're going to need to put your energy toward that.
however that however you're going to do that in some way you're going to put your energy toward that i'm i guess ferrari is italian so this is like an italian pride thing who knew um so um you're going to put your energy toward that in order to to succeed now if your energy if you so think about this as like a mathematical thing so you have uh x amount of energy to give toward whatever you want to create in your life now if you are using a portion of that energy in dragging around the metaphorical sack of rocks can you see how that takes away from the amount of energy that you can invest into other things, such as a Ferrari? Even at a very mundane level, okay? If you just think about, if, if you just look at it like, well, in order to get a Ferrari, I need to do a lot of work so I can make money. Okay, fine. Even at that level, if your energy is consumed by grievances and resentments and you're being triggered can you see how oftentimes you're not going to be performing at your best? Can you see how sometimes you're not going to feel like doing the work? And that's going to detract from your ability to transact the money. Just at a transactional basis, right? So, and, and this applies to everything. So, you know, you like you want to improve your relationship with somebody and of course it's problematic if you've got resentments toward that person but even if you have resentments towards others if your energy is is funneled away towards that then you have less energy to put toward your positive intention of improvement in your relationship which means that sometimes you're you're going to feel depleted or tired or frustrated at just the wrong moment you know, it's like, here's the perfect opportunity where if you could just bring a little bit more energy, a little bit more presence, a little bit more space, a little bit more calm, a little bit more something, boy, that could make a big difference in this relationship. But instead, you're tired and frustrated because you've been carrying around the sack of rocks. And so you lash out or you do the thing that you habitually do, which results in more of the same. So forgiveness uh, can make a huge difference in terms of your ability to manifest that which you want in your life. So even if all you want is the Ferrari, forgiveness can help you. Uh, so you, so you, you can feel better. You can be less exhausted. You can, you know, it can, you know, all those benefits. Plus it can help you to get the stuff that you want in your life. Um, and then you might be in the remaining minutes that we have here for this part of the meeting, you may be wondering, well, okay, that all sounds good. You've sold me on the idea, but I don't have any idea how to do it. Like, how do I actually forgive? Well, the good news is that you made it this far in the meeting. So you uh, already actually know how to do it because this, the secret is in uh, what I was talking about at the beginning. Right, so your willingness to actually be present is what allows you to do that. Um, I could, you know, I could give you techniques. I could give you a guided practice, uh, and that might be valuable and useful. Uh, but what I think will be more useful is to point you to that which can, when you understand what I'm what I'm pointing to you right now. Uh, you don't, you really don't need anything else. This is the, this will help you, whether it's forgiveness or love or acceptance, or you want more focus on things or whatever it is. What I'm about to point out to you is the thing that can help you to achieve all of that. Because it's, you know, deep down, you, you, you want something very 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 much and 
Um, and what you want deep down is far beyond the Ferrari or the, you know, improved health or the improved relationships, as important as those things might be. So I'm not in any way dismissing those things. If you, whatever things you want, if you truly want them, it's important. But deep down, even more important than that is what you want at the core. And we could say that's to know yourself. We could call that by many other names. Uh, and how are you going to achieve that if you are occupied being frustrated because you don't seem to have enough information yet? You know, if your attention is always out there on all the things, then you're not actually going to be able to fulfill what you want very deeply. So in order to fulfill what you want very deeply, you have to actually be willing to be present. And your brain might say, but how do I do that? Well, the thing is, it's not, it's not a doing. Uh, what, you, what, what can help is to notice all the doing that you're doing. So you could just notice you know, that attention to the next thought and the next thought and the next thought. And you could pay attention to how fast and tense everything is. The grasping for something, this sort of desperation, like, I need another thing. I need something to hold on to. And you could notice that. And in noticing that, something really remarkable can happen, which is that you could actually start to allow yourself to slow down. so that you could notice that there's actually more space. Alongside with maybe the grasping and the doing, right? So that activity may still be there, but, but I need the next thing, but what do I do? But what about later? How am I gonna fix it? He didn't tell me the solution yet. How am I gonna, yeah, no, 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 no. That might still be going on. But you could also notice that alongside that, there's a space. And that space allows you to actually start to connect to what it is that you most deeply want, which is already present. And you might notice that as that's happening, it's like on the one hand, there's this old pull to it, but I've got to do this stuff. I've got to hold on to these things. I've got to figure it all out. I've got, if I don't, then everything's going to fall apart. And I've got to hold on to the grievances in it because if I don't, then they'll do it again. And I, I don't know, all that stuff is there. And you might notice that that kind of requires a little bit more effort than you really want to make right now. And you could just start to realize that here in this space is what it is that you've always been looking for deeply. I'm not saying this satisfies things at all levels because it doesn't but deeply, very deeply. What you've always been looking for, and you might have called it by many names, you might have called it love, you might have called it acceptance, whatever you might have called it, even if you didn't call it anything, you might notice that it's actually here. There's such a wonderful, sweetness
And again, you know, the mind might be still going, saying, I don't get it. I'm weary, you know, how is this going to solve anything? That might be happening. But you might also be able to notice in this space, there's this deep fulfillment that you don't have to do anything for. It's just here. And this is a secret that can help you with forgiveness because you could just start to notice that there's a contrast. On the one hand, you could just keep holding on, clinging to doing things the old way, trying to solve the problems through the resentments and grievances. But you could notice that in contrast, there's this deep fulfillment that's here. And you could, just for a moment at least, you could just choose that. Not to get rid of anything, but just, just sort of like when you go to sleep at night, right? In order to go to sleep, you have to be willing to let go. And in a similar way, you're not getting rid of anything. It will be here for you later if you want it. But just for this moment, you could just choose just to let go of the habitual gripping and just to choose this rest that's here that offers you a deep fulfillment and a nourishment. And when you recognize that this is a possibility that's here, then you might find that you could choose this more often. And you might notice that this gives you better results than holding on to the grievances. And that when you do this, you're it's different than falling asleep. There's similarities, but it's different because here you're remaining awake. And by remaining awake, what happens is that that essence that you really want to receive from the experiences that you've been carrying around, naturally you can receive that. You don't have to think about it a great deal. It just sort of naturally comes to you because you're present. So uh, you might find that that is helpful. Now, the last thing I'm gonna say about that is that this is uh, what I've just proposed to you is a very useful and important approach that can support you in many positive ways in your life. And uh, it's just one tool in your toolbox. And if you try to use that for everything, you might not be completely satisfied with the results. So everything in its right time and place. Uh, don't try to use the wrong tool at the wrong time. Uh, and I'm pointing that out just because sometimes people will find that what I've just pointed out is so mm, delightful and seems to solve so many problems that uh, they want to just use that all the time. And um, normally, it's uh, it, it needs to be that what I've just presented to you as a possibility needs to be used uh, skillfully in conjunction with other tools in order to give you a well-rounded experience. Because otherwise, I think this is what people sometimes call spiritual bypassing. Uh, you can kind of just get to a place where you're like, I'm totally good. I have no problems. Uh, except that you can only experience that when you're not engaged in the rest of your life.
And in the moment you try to engage in the rest of your life, you realize that all of the old problems are still there waiting for you. So skillful means is to bring that knowledge and insight and integrate that back into the rest of your life so that you can change your behaviors and your thought patterns. Uh, so that's a topic for another day. But I just want to give you that caveat so that you don't make that mistake of thinking that that's going to instantaneously solve all your problems. It will instantaneously solve all your problems temporarily, but, um, but it's very, very useful for learning how to forgive. Uh, and then again, just skillful means is that bring that insight and knowledge back into the rest of your life so that you can change your thinking and your behavior. So just be aware that um, now you know that forgiveness is a real option, that it's better than what you've been doing, and you have that available to you at any time so that if you find yourself dredging up old stuff, you can just consciously remind yourself there's another way. I don't need to hold on to this. I can choose to let this go and to receive the the essence of what is here for me that I can learn that can help me and enrich my life. So it can kind of come full circle. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I trust that this will have a positive impact in your life. And for those who are here live, I'm happy to stay on for the group coaching. And uh, for those who watch this on YouTube, I just want to say a few parting words. Number one, if you're interested in joining these meetings live, you're welcome to, boring as they might be. Uh, and you can get that information for how to join these live by signing up for my newsletter at my website, joylot.com. I'll leave the link in the description. And for those who are, who are interested in nine weeks of boredom, uh, you may be interested in the Manifesting Truth program where you actually have to pay to be bored. And uh, But the, the upside of that is that it can have a tremendously positive impact in your life. Um, and it can help you to learn the skills and the knowledge so that you don't have to listen to me anymore. You can just do it for yourself. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, and so if you're interested in that, you can learn more at joylot.com slash manifesting dash truth. And, uh, and I, I, I want to, with all humility and sincerity, thank everybody who participates live and through watching and leaving comments. Thank you to all of the people who do leave comments, even those comments um, that uh, might be might seem to be negative comments. I, I really take a lot of value from them and I appreciate that you take the time to share your experience because that's valuable. And so I send blessings to all of you. May all beings know peace. Uh, and I'm going to conclude this recording now.